Good evening, this is FBC News, I'm Jackie Spade. In this bulletin, new Mbutha Bay Road project completed. Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority extends amnesty to October. And Fiji Airways makes loan $20 million repayment to FNPF. The new Mbutha Bay Road was opened by Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama today. The new road is one of the biggest infrastructure projects ever undertaken in the Northern Division, benefiting six villages and seven settlements, which will now benefit from the new 30-kilometer sealed road. The entire 30-kilometer stretch of road cost $113 million, borrowed from the Exim Bank of China. Mbani Marama says the new road is part of his vision to transform the north and extend to the people of Vanua Levu the same level of services Fijians enjoy on Viti Levu. The government has extended the amnesty period given to local taxpayers who have accepted penalties that have been imposed but do not have any means to pay them. The amnesty relates to locals who own offshore assets and liabilities who were required to declare to Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority by the end of last month. Finance Minister Ayasad Kayum announced the extension at the stakeholder consultations on the draft income tax bill 2015. Ali Kimbia has more. The amnesty period to declare offshore assets and liabilities was supposed to end last month and due to some logistical issues, the government has extended it to October. But I'm saying generally we've had small income taxpayers who have not uh, um, you know, uh, been given all the information and they've been assessed uh, and FERCA has come down on them and they said look we want to pay but we don't have the means to, to pay so uh, and we accept the liability, we want to have a payment arrangement. FERCA is calling on taxpayers who have been imposed penalties to come forward and discuss payment arrangements. Apart from um, finding difficulties to meet the repayments, so, you know, just have to come to FERCA and we will uh, map out uh, together with them uh, repayment schedules uh, time, eh? as well as the wave of penalties, uh, this all will be part of this package. Eh? Earlier this year, the Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority estimated that 50.3 million of back tax is owed from over 8,000 taxpayers. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. New modernized provisions are expected in the new draft income tax bill 2015. Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority Chief Executive Officer Chitoko Tikolevu says the changes are important for the bill. Ali Kimbi again with more on the story. Representatives from a wide cross-section of the business community turned up for the stakeholder consultations on the draft income tax bill today. And the other legislation so like stamp duty, um, free benefit taxes, uh, capital gains have got uh, different legislations always been consolidated to one basis, including uh, subject to space in terms of uh, regulations. Changes in the draft income tax bill are in line with the new reforms implemented by the Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority. The, the new legislation links very well with a tax administration reforms, uh, particularly the self-assessment system. Uh, self-assessment depends very much on taxpayers being able to self-assess their liability. For the bill to be passed as an act of parliament, transparency is important to put together a set of rules and regulations. Tax laws, uh, in our opinion, really needs to be something that's very transparent. Everybody should know the rules of the game and people should essentially just come along and pay the tax. Should there be a particular uh, issue in terms of interpretation, there should be certain guidelines because obviously you cannot always envisage what will happen, what specific you know, scenario will take place. The 13th draft of the Income Tax Bill 2015 has gone through the most extensive consultation compared to any proposed bill to Parliament. The Income Tax Bill will be presented in Parliament, then it will go through the Standing Committee for a final round of consultations. Ali Kimbia, 
FBC News. Fiji Airways has today made a lump sum payment of $20 million to the Fiji National Provident Fund for a $181 million loan for its new fleet of aircraft. Edwin Nunn reports the payment is on top of normal monthly installments. We've chosen to the early repayment means Fiji Airways now owes less than $100 million to the Fiji National Provident Fund. Come December 2015, the actual amount that will be owed will be less than 50% of the bonds, which shows the joint partnership that Fiji Airways have with FMPF and also the, the good financial due diligence and the good financial decision making that's being made. The money was used to buy three new Airbus A330-200 series aircraft. In the days that followed, there were claims that the venture would fail, the FNPF would lose millions of dollars and staff and management of the fund were even harassed personally. You know, this lot of lot of negativity without understanding the process that actually went behind. Mm. Uh, and it was a total uh, arms length transaction and uh, we, 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 we've proven that we've come good on it. Ajit Kodagoda says the loan was signed at a commercial rate, which means more money is being pumped into members' accounts. Aviation Minister A.S.A. at Kayum says investments like these are a springboard for the economy. The reality is that the people who are very critical of this deal had absolutely no idea to the point of being very obtuse. They do not have the facts, the figures, nor do they think laterally. They in fact politicize the entire issue. And Fiji is only going to progress if we depoliticize these types of transactions. The loan was taken out in 2013. Two years later, by the end of 2015, it will be less than half the original $180 million. Edwin Nand, FPC News. Police are still investigating the murder-suicide in Kalor Street in Kinoya Nasinu over the weekend. The post-mortem of the two children and their father was conducted yesterday. Police have confirmed the woman who survived the incident is still admitted at the CWM hospital in critical condition. It's understood Johit Prasad killed his children, attacked his wife and later died of self-inflicted injuries. Meanwhile, three people who suffered burns in an early morning fire in Tua Tua remain admitted at the Lambasa hospital. A 45-year-old woman, her three-year-old granddaughter and a 20-year-old man suffered burns in the incident. A five-year-old boy died in the blaze which broke out while the family was sleeping. The investigation to ascertain the cause of fire continues. Drone technology captures damage caused by tropical cyclone Pam in Vanuatu, that and more after the break. घर संसार में आपका स्वागत है आपका अपना छोटा सा स्वर जहाँ प्यार भरे रिश्ते पलते हैं जहाँ हेल्थी रहने की सलाह दी जाती है जहाँ हम आपको और भी सुंदर बनाते हैं और जहाँ स्वाद की सौगात भी है नमस्कार मैं हूँ पल्लवी सोमवार से शुक्रवार 9 से 12 तक रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन पर घर संसार में शामिल रहिए मेरे साथ ऐसा सुंदर सपना अपना Vanuatu's former Prime Minister Edward Natape died this morning after a long-term illness. The opposition leader passed away in a hospital in Port Vila at the age of 61. Natape served as Prime Minister of Vanuatu twice, first between 2001 and 2004, and again from 2008 to 2010. He was also a member of the Pacific Islands Forum Ministerial Contact Group, sent to Fiji in 2013 to assess elections progress. The Vanua Aku political party president was known as a statesman who was well loved. A state funeral has been planned for Friday. The Secretariat of the Pacific Community has successfully used drone technology to capture the damage caused by Tropical Cyclone Pam in Vanuatu. The new technology has meant that the SPC is able to access areas which otherwise would have proved impossible. Ritika Pratap reports. This high-tech equipment has been used in various parts of the region, but it really came into its element when scientists from the Secretariat of the Pacific Community conducted surveys in Vanuatu. They mapped damage to coastline, forestry, communities and farms. In many ways it's, it can be seen as a, as a game changer, especially uh, in the area our, our team is working on, which is 
uh, uh, really related to, um, to coastal oceanography, uh, coastal management, uh, inundation hazard. And one of the big gaps we, we've been having for, for many years in the region is uh, uh, high resolution topography data, uh, which is a, a, a very key uh, information as soon as we want to look at um, uh, inundation hazard. The drone captured high resolution, accurate topography data on a large area in an efficient and cheap manner and it will be put to use as much as possible. Those drone technology to, to do topography mapping, mapping in the, in the coastal areas, which is one of, one of the big uh, gap we, we have right now in the region. Um, and we definitely uh, eager to, to, um, to optimize our system to, to, to be more relevant during, during uh, um, uh, disaster, disaster after disaster event. One of the benefits for gathering topography data or 3D shoreline images via drones is the ability to make long-term plans based on the research conducted. If we have a high resolution uh, and we have confidence on the topography data we have in, in, a, in a coastal zone, then that creates the basis for a, a new coastal management project. Also, if we have a better understanding of how a cyclone wave impact on, on a on the coastline, then we can uh, better uh, uh, find solution to uh, mitigate those kind of uh, those kind of events. SPC bought its drone in July last year, and since then it has conducted three surveys in the region. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Public hearings about plans to change Nandronga Navosa High School into a technical college are scheduled to be held in next month. A petition table by opposition MP Viliaming Avoka is currently before the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Social Affairs. Meanwhile, Education Minister Dr. Mahindra Reddy says the college development will go ahead. I sympathize for um, Honorable Gavoka. At the first, at the beginning, he said that the Provincial Council was not consulted. We then went back to the Provincial Council and demonstrated that the Provincial Council is totally with us. He then said the parents need to be consulted. We went back and as you probably noted and read in the uh, print media and heard in the um, TV, the parents has apologized and said that no, they're totally with us and they are, they are looking forward to the technical college there. Public consultations on the petition have been scheduled from the 10th to the 14th of next month in Singatoga Town. The Fiji Broadcasting Corporation has scooped three awards at the FNU Fiji International Film Festival. The awards are for the Best Director, Best Educational Program and Best Short Film on Environmental, environmental Awareness. Julie Batuwaliwali reports. Fabian Randereth is one of the three employees who received recognition for their outstanding work. Randerath's documentary called Cyclone Warriors won the best short film on environmental awareness. Uh, and it was a complete uh, surprise for me. It was the first time I've done a documentary like that. I've done short films before, but uh, I was really, uh, especially because it was not that much time that we had to actually produce the documentary. And we just shot it in three days in the Yasawas. Just Kids producer and host Courtney Underwood who won the award for the best educational program. Uh, being recognized means a lot to not only me but my team because it inspires us to work harder and smarter and create avenues for children to learn while having fun. Chonito Musi has scooped the best TV film director for the weekly program Sports Lounge. Planning to, to produce more local shows uh, here at the Fiji Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, I'd like to encourage uh, local upcoming uh, uh, filmmakers. Uh, we all will, will can't be the presenters or producers or directors, but uh, if you could you know, own feel like a cameraman or a sound engineer or lighting person, uh, I think you need to pursue more in whatever area that you're comfortable in as a, as a filmmaker. Tomusi and his colleagues are looking forward to more opportunities like the film festival to showcase their film work. Julie Watawaliwali, FBC News. 
Young people of Yangeta Island and the Yasawa Group have been urged to practice lessons learned during a week-long youth empowerment on farm and land management training. Minister for Youth and Sports Honorable Laisenia Tuitumbo called on the young people to ensure that government's efforts were put to good use. Tokasa Rainima reports. <laughs> The youths of Yangeta village in Yasawa are now better equipped with farming and land management skills and they are now ready to put it into practice. Government and Ministry of Youth and Sports has brought this empowerment workshop to your shows so the onus is now on you to put into practice all that have been taught to you because if you fail to administer all that you have learned during the workshop then uh, that would mean the empowerment training was all for naught. Minister Laisenia Tutumbo says the ministry will monitor the development of youths on the island and he will look at their progress when he returns in October. We are resource rich but on the other hand are money poor. Therefore I call upon you to effectively implement all that you have learned to generate revenue for yourselves. Participant Elena Naisua of Yangeta was inspired by the minister's visit. Now our minds have been enlightened, we are encouraged to plant and when we sell our produce, we can save money and also make profit. Tutumbo also spoke to students of Yangeta Village School where he reiterated the importance of education and government's commitment to the education sector. Tokasa Reinima, FBC News. We turn to sports now. Here's Jamie. Thank you, Jackie, and good evening in sports tonight. Ten changes to flying Fiji and starting 15 and Rewa football ready to defend the BOG title. This and more coming up. just joined us on the system after dark this is a homegrown number courtesy of e3 and cracker Bula, how's it going i'm d your host on the system after dark right here on today fm today's hit music you can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m that's from monday to friday only on the home of today's hit music and don't forget that's d with you every weeknight on the system after dark Changes have been made to the Vodafone Flying Fijian starting 15 for the Pacific Nations Cup match against Japan on Thursday. In the front row, Kampizi Mafu and Toapati Talmai Tonga start ahead of Penny Ravai and Sunia Koto. The other inclusions in the starting forwards are Tevita Davumbati, Dominico Wangani Buroto and Malakai Ravulo. In the back line, Henry Seniloli and Josh Matavesi partner up at 9 and 10. Napoleon Inalanga at left wing, Lepani Botia at inside centre and Kini Murumurivalu starts at fullback. The match starts at 10 a.m. on Thursday. The Nandraga rugby side will be making a number of changes to its lineup as they battle for a spot in the Skipper Cup semi finals. The Stallions, currently ranked second in the competition, take on Northland at home this Saturday. Josephine Avula reports. The Nandraga rugby team has wasted no time in getting into shape and stepping up their game for the elimination rounds this week. President Tiko Matawalu says they will continue the rotation policy for the match against Northland. Looking at our, um, our regular place and uh, also with our new players coming up, uh, there will be some surprises uh, to the lineup that uh, we will have uh, going into these crucial games, especially for the semi final and, uh, and uh, you know, going through semi finals successfully uh, to the finals. And, uh, all. This year's rugby season has been tough for the team. It's been a very uh, tough year for us, um, um, and uh, that, that can be reflected in our uh, games during the season. Um, we lost two, two games compared to last year. We lost to uh, Suba and we also lost to Nitasiri. And uh, we, have, we have a lot to work on. Uh, and and, th and that's, that's the biggest challenge that we have uh, moving into, uh, into these uh, semi-finals. However, Matawalu adds, the players have improved with every game. At this uh, point in time, we have a pretty uh, clear idea of um, who, who, who is... Uh, uh, or which players that um, 
that uh, we can uh, depend and we can uh, rely on to, to take us through the, the playoffs for this Keeper Cup. Nadronga will host Northland at Lawanga Park at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Josefina Vula, FBC Sports. While the pressure is on Rio Football to defend its Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants title, the Delta Tigers have said it will focus on each game as it comes, starting with its opening match against Ba. Indra Singh has more. <laughs> Being the defending champions and hosts of the 2015 BOG, the Rewa football side will start as one of the top bets for the title. However, the defense, while important, is not the most important thing on their minds. Well, uh, our mission is, uh, is very clear. I think uh, the boys understand that we need to defend this, uh, this tournament. But uh, for, for me, the objective is to, to win uh, a game at a time. And uh, at the moment, uh, all, all our resources are devoted into the first game. Laced with players from the national under-20 and 23 teams, Rewa has a good mix of youth and experienced players. I think uh, they are part of this team. Uh, it's always good to, to have them back, uh, to represent the district. Uh, uh, they come back with a lot of experience uh, from uh, international outing. Uh, we'd like to see them uh, give their best shot uh, for the district as well. Rondu says there will be a lot of pressure playing on the home soil, but the team knows what needs to be done in the next few days before the start of the tournament. Uh, so far we, we understand uh, where we are at the moment. I uh, think uh, we are into the final phase of our preparation. Uh, we played uh, two games uh, with Suba, uh, managed to, uh, to find a good combination, move players here and there, uh, try out uh, different players in a different position with a different uh, strategy. Rewa lost the Fiji Fact final earlier this year and wants to go one better in the BOG. After all, the Tigers know they can roar the loudest because they will be featuring in their own den. Interesting, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Mbaa football side has been dealt with a blow with the four-match suspension of defender Pranil Naidu. The Fiji and 20 rep was red-carded in the Rewa Galaxy Premier League match against Nandi for abusing match officials. He has already missed one game and will set out Mbaa's opening three BOG matches. The BOG starts on Friday at 1 p.m. with Tailebu Naita Siri taking on Lautoka. After a grueling match against the Silver Ferns, the Fiji netball side is still confident of a good outing at the World Cup next month. The loss against the Kiwis has not deterred the team's preparations. Rahit Deo reports. The aim has been set and it will take some hard work to achieve. The Pearls have learned a lot from their 91-31 loss to the Silver Ferns last week. I think the last week has been the, uh, a true week in high-performance sport, coming off the back of a gold medal win in Port Moresby and then to what we felt was a disappointing performance against the Silver Ferns. But the thing that was very good was how we regrouped after that match. Fiji meets Wales in their first encounter at the World Cup and the coach is looking forward to it. Um, well, it's the first match of the tournament, so we open and that's always very special to start the World Cup. Um, and it will be an exciting match and we'll be well prepared. Um, Carpenter says there are no major injuries in our squad. The group that went to New Zealand, uh, no significant injuries, just niggles. Uh, but we're just waiting to see if Una Raoluni will be cleared from a, a stress fracture. Meanwhile, the Fiji Sports Commission handed over a cheque of $162,600 to the Pearls today. Fiji takes on Wales at the World Cup on Friday week. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. And a reminder that you can watch all of Fiji's games at the Netball World Cup, including the semi-finals and finals, live on APC TV. That is your sports for tonight. Good evening. $7 million worth of renovation work to the outside of the Reserve Bank building is set to be completed in August. Governor Barry Whiteside says all the structural renovation has been finalized and all that remains is the landscaping and touch-ups to certain areas. This major overhaul to the outside of the RBF is the first of its kind since the building's establishment in 1983. The governor says while he doesn't expect a big opening once all works are complete, he is considering having the building blessed. 
Future Forest Fiji Limited is now the preferred provider of tree seedlings to the Secretariat of the Pacific Community for the Forest Fiji Project, funded by the European Union. The Reforest Fiji Project will see SPC working with farmers to produce 7.5 million seedlings of various species for the establishment of plantations, woodlots and orchids in Fiji. The project action plan is to alleviate risks of natural disasters by reversing ongoing soil de de Sorry, degradation on the sloping foothills within three specific pilot sugarcane sectors. These areas include Ndrasa, Koronumbu and Malolo. The reforestation initiative will see them supplying $1.6 million worth of teak seedlings in the first two weeks of the program. Cloudy periods with brief showers were experienced over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Elsewhere, mainly fine weather prevailed. A trough of low pressure lies slow moving over Tuvalu and the Solomon Islands. Meanwhile, a broad east to southeast wind flow prevails over most southwest Pacific Island countries. Temperatures were recorded in the high 20s today. Suva had 27 degrees, Nandi had 30, Lautoka, Mbai and Lambasa recorded 29 degrees, and Savu Savu hit 26 degrees. Outlook for midnight, brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Elsewhere fine, cool nights, moderate southeast winds, fresh at times. And the outlook for Thursday, brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Elsewhere fine. And the main points again, the new Mbutha Bay Road has been opened by Prime Minister Vorenge Mbani Marama today. Fiji Airways has made a lump sum payment of $20 million to the Fiji National Provident Fund for a loan for its new fleet of aircrafts. And police investigations are continuing into the murder-suicide in Kalor Street in Kinoya Nasinu over the weekend. Now to our poll segment this week, we're asking, should more youths be encouraged to enter the local film industry? Visit our FBC website, www.fbc.com.fj, to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email, citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj, or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news, or simply hashtag FBC News. You can also find us on YouTube, FBC TV 2011. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spade. Join us again at the same time tomorrow. Good night. Gold FM, only the classic hits, beautiful song from the group Firehouse and When I Look Into Your Eyes. Before that, you heard from Smokey Robinson with One Hot Beat. We'll take a short break and join us in the next hour for more music from Seal. Bulabalaka, I'm DJ Tora. Join me every weekdays, 7 until midnight, on the premium classics. Right here on Gold FM, only the classic hits.